of uh, Greek. And I also managed to pick up some Spanish. Okay, so I have, I've been, I love languages, basically, right? Uh, and hopefully I'll also learn your language one day, too. Okay, now, uh, yes, as I said, I travel extensively and I work with uh, teachers of all different backgrounds. Okay, teachers that work with children, teachers that work with uh, teenagers, with adults. Okay, so I've got experience in many different uh, fields as well. Today, I'm going to be uh, talking to you about teaching English, but also teaching a mixed ability classroom. What do I mean by teaching mixed ability? In our classrooms, you're all teachers, you know that we never have a classroom that all the students are exactly at the same level. You might have some students that are way up there, you might have some ones some students are strugglers and body, and you have you know, students in between. And as a teacher, we need to make sure that we identify our students' needs. Okay, We want to make the lesson just right for everybody. We want to make it sufficiently challenging for everyone. Okay, Not too difficult, because if it's too difficult, what happens? Students turn off. They don't, they don't want to engage. If it's too easy, okay, same thing. They don't make progress. So we're going to be looking at ways we can, you know, make our lessons engaging for our students. Okay, how we can diversify our lessons. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention. Please ask me questions as we go along. Okay, you don't have to wait till the end of the presentation. If there's something you want to ask, just raise your hand. Okay. If there's something you don't agree with, okay, let me know. Right. Just I want, as I said, I want this session to be as engaging and useful to you as possible, right? So we're going to be talking about mixed ability classrooms. We're in this situation here. Has this ever happened to you? Do you have this ever happened in your classrooms? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you assign a task. The ones that really get it, they're done, all right? And the other ones haven't even started yet. They're still, they're, still, they're still trying to read the first sentence, okay? So how do we deal with these kind of situations? What can we do to engage our students? So basically, the problems are, when we have mixed ability classes, not all students reach their potential, okay? Because as I said, the ones, the high achievers, might not be getting enough. The ones that are struggling might be left behind. So these are some of the problems, okay? As I said, the more able might not be stretched, okay, while the weaker students might feel neglected, like, I don't belong here, you know, I, I shouldn't be doing this, it's not for me, I'm stupid. No, we never want that to happen, all right? We're going to talk about that. And the end result, of course, is that <laughs> what do we do as teachers, you know, we feel frustrated, like, oh my God, what am I going to do with these kids? Now, grouping students according to their ability, would seem like a logical thing to do, right? But the point I want to make now is that even if you have a classroom where all the students are really good, or if you have a classroom that all the students are you know, struggling a little bit, even in those classrooms, there's still going to be differences with the students. No two students are going to be exactly the same. Right? So what we're going to be doing is that looking at ways we can engage our students regardless of what their learning styles are or how we can make them work. But, as I said, even the classes that have been set, all right, they do have students that come with certain abilities that others might not have. Now, the point I want to make here is, what makes a class mixed ability? Tell me for a moment, speak to the person next to you, I'll give you one minute, talk to the person next to you, and think of many different ways a classroom can differ. How can students be different in a classroom? Talk to the people next to you, I'm going to ask you for a feedback, okay? What makes a class mixed ability? So, in terms of understanding, um, 
understanding the understanding in the see up or myth pranakutu vocabulary emo, emotional emotional state of the students if they're feeling okay um, health problems they might be going through some health problems and we don't know we expect students to be Bullying. This is general. Some students, when, when they're bullied, they don't feel okay and then they don't even engage. Okay. Before I put up some ideas here, who would like to share something? I heard some good ideas as I was going around listening to you. I heard very nice and interesting ideas. Who would like to share something? Yes. Different learning styles. Different learning styles. Exactly. You know, some people like to work, perhaps. <laughs> Different single skills. Exactly. Like some students might be good at listening or reading, perhaps. Mix them up. Yes. Different background knowledge. Different background knowledge. That's very important. Yes. That's true. You know, people. You might have some students that know so much about, uh, I don't know, electronics, okay? Or know so much about uh, the environment, okay? Exactly. What else? <laughs> Different interests, exactly. So, yeah, these are some ideas that I've heard. I actually heard a lot of them, the ones that you mentioned. <laughs> In terms of learning styles, okay? How people like to learn. <laughs> Some of you mentioned motivation, I heard. Some students really want to learn English. They're really interested in it. Others, ah, why do I have to learn English? Oh, English is so boring. <laughs> okay, the types of language knowledge they have. Yes. Background culture. I love the confidence. Exactly. Our students come different kinds of mentality, different cultures, different backgrounds. From the West. From the West, exactly. Okay. From everywhere, right? Exactly. Okay. She's not stopping. Exactly. So we need to be thinking about this. Keep this in the back of our minds, okay? And that's what as a publisher, when we create our materials, we always keep that in mind. You know there's no such thing as a homogeneous classroom, okay? okay. Let them oh, there you go. You have, exactly. So let's look at some strategies now for teaching mixed ability in classrooms. Okay, these are just some ideas. You may agree with some of them. You may disagree. Remember, we're here to share our thoughts. We are all teachers, okay? We have all different experiences, so let's just learn also from each other. So some strategies. First of all, all students should be allowed to experience success and to learn as individuals. Students need to feel that, yes, I'm making progress. I'm learning something. I'm moving on. It's not, if they feel stagnated, like, uh, I'm not learning anything. I don't know anything. You know, you lose them. Okay, so they need to be able to feel like, yes, yes, I'm good. I can do this, all right? And how are we going to do that? We're going to show you. We're going to talk about that. And here's just a quote. I like this quote. All children are born with potential, okay? And we cannot be sure of the learning limits of any child, okay? And you can tell that to your students. You know, you're not stupid. Nobody, you're not, you don't know something yet. And I always add the word yet. You don't know something yet. But you will learn it, okay? And you're going to learn it. It's going to be fun and engaging. You'll see. Some tips. All students should be able to see us, hear us, and we should be able to do the same. How are your classrooms uh, set up? 
Are you able to have visual contact with all your students? Do your students work in groups? Do they work in, uh, in single files? How are your classrooms set up? Groups, you said? Single file? Okay, but the point is, make sure that the students can all see the teacher, okay? Can all hear the teacher. I've been to some countries and they say, I have 60 students in my classroom. I was in Latin America, I was like, in one school in Mexico, oh, I have 63 students in one classroom. <laughs> I was like, okay, I know that's a difficult situation, but if that's, your, oh, that's what you have to deal with, you have to find a way to deal with that and stop complaining, I mean, if that's your reality. But the point is that all our students should be able to hear us and see us and so on. We should take the time to learn about our students. Do you ever ask about your students, like, what did you do on the weekend? Yeah. 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 And you say, oh, you watched the, the football game. Oh, you went camping. So you know a little bit about your student's background. And that helps because when you do a lesson afterwards and you include some stories, you know, you say, oh, yes, and uh, Juan or Maria told me she went camping and we're going to talk about camping. It makes them feel like they're, you are interested in them. And it also makes them feel like, yeah, let's talk about this. Be patient and fair. All right, what I mean by fair is, as I said, sometimes some students know the answer very quickly. They know it right away. Others might need some time to look at it, okay? So make sure that all of the students have some time to think about the questions and so on, all right? And it's all about, you know, giving students equal opportunities, making sure that, you know, they feel listened to, okay? That their thoughts, that you care about them, basically. Now, another thing here, another point, is I always try to teach my students to become independent learners. You know, sometimes uh, students will say, sir, sir, what does this word mean? I go, I don't know what it means. I'll tell them, why don't you tell me what it means? Let's look at some strategies, I'll say. Let's read what comes before. What comes after this? What do you think it might mean? Okay, we still don't know. Perhaps now we can look at a dictionary. You know, I want them to become autonomous, you know, like, don't rely on someone else. Rely on your own strengths as well, you know. Look at the dictionary, look somewhere, you know, take action. Yeah, do some searching, encourage them, okay? And I remember I used to tell students, uh, does anybody know what this word means? No? Then that's part of your homework. All of you have to, <laughs> and that way, that was a bad idea, because then those students ever asked any questions, I'm like, <laughs> so they were afraid I was going to make them do that to home. But no, you should encourage students to ask questions and tell them, okay, let's find the solution or the answer to that, okay? Now, many children don't achieve their potential because they're told to learn English, to make the journey, but they're not taught how to do it. How can we help them? Okay, what can we do? And this is what we're going to be looking at. How can we make sure that our students have the tool, the knowledge, to go out and get those answers that they need? In other words, we need to teach our students how to learn. Okay? How do we learn? What works best for you? Okay? Does it work talking it over with somebody, with, in your, with a classmate? Does it help if you open up a dictionary? How do you learn something? Okay? And never be afraid, of course, as I said, to make mistakes. So to teach students to be effective learners. Tell them to set goals, okay? This week, I'm going to learn five new words, okay? Set a goal. What is it that you want to be able to do? Teach students to think for themselves. You know, before asking you, you know, what does the word mean? Say, well, let's read what comes before. Let's read what comes after. What do you think this word means? Or maybe you know the word inform, or you know, what does information might mean, okay? Well, it's a part of that word. Try to break it down a word to its parts, all right? Uh, teaching students to be organized, okay? That's self-explanatory, all right? Uh, teaching students specific learning strategies, all right? For example, when it comes to reading, okay? Teach them to read the whole text, look at the title, not to skip the title. Read it and skim through it. Then go back, read it again for details and so on. Look for clues in the sentence. So looking for 
specific strategies they can use. That will always help our students, okay? And about pacing, that means sometimes our students think they have all the time in the world. You know, we have to tell them, okay, let's move on. Don't waste time, okay? Tend to waste time and go on to other activities. So this is also something we need to do. Now, the role of the teacher should be that of a facilitator. A teacher's job is not to sit there in front of the classroom and to give out all this information and knowledge. That's not what teachers do, okay? They are there to help the students make that journey. Okay? They're there to understand who their students are and help them make that step, make progress and learn, okay? To, to know exactly what your students are struggling. You know, you say, oh, my student Ahmed, he struggles with the present tenses. Okay, he needs more practice with uh, the present tenses. Well, whereas Maria, okay, she has a very lack of vocabulary. She doesn't know any vocabulary. So I know my students and I can help them, okay? Use a variety for different learning preferences. I mean, in your classrooms, I'm sure you have some students that love to talk. Do you have students that like talking? All of them. All of them. <laughs> exactly. You have some students, you know, that are very like autonomous. They want to learn by themselves. They want to read. Do you have those kind of students that are like the bookworms, you know? Yeah. We have those type of students too. Okay? We have students that like listening. They love listening to music. They learn best through hearing. Alright? And you also have some students that are writers. They like to write things down, take notes. Okay, so as a teacher, we have to make sure that we cater for all these different learning styles. It's not an easy job. I'm not saying I'm not standing here telling you, oh, it's so easy. You know, it's not. It's very difficult. Okay, but if we as teachers take the time, we make that effort to, you know, tell our students that hey, I care about you. Let me show you how you can, you know, improve on that. Let me give you some ideas. So just knowing about that is something very helpful. And that's why in our books, okay, all of our books at NM Publications, we know that we have students that learn best through hearing, others through seeing and reading, others by socializing and talking to others. So that's why in our books, we always try to have the different four skills. And if you notice, in our books, we always put the receptive skills. You know what receptive skills are? Yeah? Receptive skills are reading Senses. and listening. The ones that we get from reading and listening. The productive skills are speaking and writing. And you know, you cannot tell a student, okay, now in Paris, talk about your hobbies. How are they going to talk about their hobbies if they haven't learned about words related to hobbies, let's say? That's why in our books, we always start with the receptive skills, listening, reading, vocabulary, okay? And then the productive skills, like speaking and writing, come towards the end. So you see here we have vocabulary, all right? Then this vocabulary, they're going to see some of it in context, in a reading text. And that's also something very important. When your students are learning vocabulary, don't just teach them the translation of that word in their own language. You have to teach them what that word means in English, okay? Because words, first of all, may not have an exact translation from English to your native language. I mean, I'm, as I said, I'm of Greek descent. Some words don't exist that are in Greek, don't exist in English. You know, like, and some words are so closely together. Like, if you say, for example, my grandfather died. Or if you say, my grandfather passed away. What's the difference? Yeah. Exactly. Died, you think like, okay, he's dead, he's buried, he's like, but passed away, you know, it's more sad, but it means the same thing, maybe. Yeah, so, again, we always try to teach students the vocabulary and the different meanings of vocabulary, okay? But, if you'll see that, we always put the productive skills towards the end so they can use some of that. All right, close your eyes, everybody, now. We'll do a little, uh, a little experiment. Okay, I always do this with my students. Close your eyes. Don't sleep. 
Okay, listen, listen to me. Oh, sorry. Close your eyes. Imagine you are at home. You are relaxing on your couch, listening to some soothing music. At home, yes. It's quiet. The kids are sleeping. The house chores are done. Oh, I like that. You have nothing to worry about. And then, as you're there relaxing, you start to get a little hungry. You get up and say, oh, perhaps I'll have a snack. You go to the kitchen. You open the refrigerator. And what do you see? You see? Okay, this wasn't bad. This was in the back door. You see an elephant. Okay? The point I do here is that it says, you forgot to read the note. Beware of the elephant. The point I want to make is that sometimes, as students, I like to make them imagine something by using vocabulary. Okay? They close their eyes, they think about it, and then they do something ridiculous, like, oh, and then there's an elephant, and they're like shocked, and they laugh as well. But it got them to think, because I told them to think of what I'm saying, okay? And it got their minds working around it. And then I also do like things like elephant jokes. You know what elephant jokes are? Elephant jokes are jokes that build, each joke builds upon yeah. the previous one. And you have to remember the previous one yeah. to understand, like, for example, what time is it when an elephant sits on in your car or on your car? What time is it when an elephant sits on your car? Eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock? Yeah. Nine. Elephant o'clock. Nine o'clock. Elephant o'clock. Elephant o'clock. Okay. <laughs> it's eleven o'clock. Good. Well, it's uh, time to get in your car. <laughs> All right. Here's another elephant door. How do you get an yeah. elephant into the fridge? You open the door, put the elephant in the fridge. You open the door, put the elephant, you push it in, shove it in. Very good. Very simple. Some people overanalyze. That's another point. Don't overanalyze something. Yeah. How do you get a giraffe into the fridge? You take out the elephant. You know this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our students told us. The students told us. Yeah, they did. Yes. You open the door and you remove the camera. Okay. All right. And the last question. The king of the jungle, the lion, decided to have a party. He went every animal. The point is, all right, you are to break teaching the routine. an English class, and, but you're also instilling some humor. And believe me, when students enjoy your lessons, they learn, they learn more effectively. Okay? If they think that English is something that is fun and engaging and interesting and useful, they will want to participate and learn, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Cater for the different learning styles. Does anybody here have a particular learning style? Yeah. What's your learning? How do you like to learn? Visual. Visual. You if, like to see things. If I see it, I'll remember it. I'm like you. You can explain something to me as, using as many words or as few words. If I don't see it, you know, it, it doesn't really click, you know, but yes. Okay. Other students, okay, might be the ones that like to be told. They're verbal linguistic. They like to read it, okay, to understand it, to use the language. You might have some students that are the logical, mathematical type of learners. They like to analyze things. They like to put things in groups, okay, structures. These are the students that usually like grammar. These are the students that love the rules, okay, the exceptions, all right? Do you have students that like grammar a lot? Yeah. No, so it's always mixed again. Some classes you have students that love grammar. Other students, there's too many exceptions in grammar. I hate grammar, okay, but yeah. 
The visual spatial type of uh, learner who likes to visualize objects. The musical rhythmic. Okay, these are the students that like to or can have the ability to recognize patterns and sounds, and they like music, they like songs. And by the way, songs are a great way to learn vocabulary. Different for different learners, exactly. Exactly. And you know, my students, when I was a teacher, they used to always come to me and say, Sir, what does this mean? I'm like, where did you hear that? Oh, it's in that song by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'm like, okay, well, why don't you look it up? And then you tell us what it means. And sometimes I would ask students to, you know, bring in their favorite songs with vocabulary. Of course, it has to be appropriate. I have to check the language of that song first before I play it and talk about it's it. Most of the time, it's it's a way to engage our students, okay? Now, other types of learners, you have a bodily kinesthetic type of learner. You have the students that cannot sit still. They like to get up, do things with their hands, okay? Again, as a teacher, we have to try to cater for those kind of learners, all right? So you can be mixed. We have the interpersonal type of learner. These are the, the socializers. These are the students that like to be in pairs and groups. They like to talk to other students, okay? You have, I'm sure you have these type of learners in your classroom, okay? But then you also have the opposite. You have the interpersonal type of learner. These are the students that like to be alone, like to work on their own, they like to figure out things on their own, reflect, okay? And you also have these in the naturalists. These are the students that are into nature and they can find, they can recognize these little distinctions and patterns in the natural world. Again, different learning abilities, different learning styles. The point that I want to make is that in our books, we take all of this into consideration, okay, when we create our MM books, and we try to include activities, reading text, listening text, speaking activities, that no matter what learning style a student has, they will enjoy it, okay? They will learn from that. So, what are the implications for teachers? Diversify your approach, okay? In other words, in your lesson, in your English lesson, Try to have a little bit of art, okay? An art lesson, okay? But in English, all right? Try to use methods that appeal to all the intelligences, you know, like for the logical type of learner, okay? For the socializer that likes to do pair work, single work. Encourage students to develop their own, okay, sorry, let me just go back. To encourage their own different, uh, different individual differences, okay? So if you know that your students like to be, uh, you know, doing things in pairs, have them to work in pairs, okay? Have them work in groups, and so on. Now, this is a sample page from our books, and you'll see here, in our books, what we always do is that we always start off with vocabulary, okay? And we try to tell students, okay, what is happening here? Try to describe, and we always give some vocabulary, some sample words as well, and taking that into the consideration, we always try to have our students, you know, Make a connection. Songs. Songs are very useful when you're learning a language. And in our books, we include songs, songs that are appropriate for schools, okay, for classrooms. But all of our songs always come with activities. They're not just songs, okay, let's listen to a song and relax. Yeah, that's fine too. But all our songs have an activity, okay, where they have to write in missing words, circle the word, okay? And as I said, sometimes it lightens, uh, it lightens up the mood. And I play the songs for my students. They like it, okay? They enjoy it. It wakes them up. Move your hips. Dur gur gulon ayo, tonga shotas. Shift art, many are good. How does she know the song? How do you know the song? You don't like that, I know. I use these books. Ah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> right. The only thing about songs is that after you play it, it's kind of hard to get your students' attention back. Exactly. They just want to start a I mean, They want to start the party. Yeah. That's a good point. So you have to set certain guidelines. Say, we're going to do this, but hey, afterwards, you know, we have to go back into our lesson. And if you don't 
follow the rules, we're not going to do this, and, uh, and so on, right? So it's a useful tool to use in class, but make sure that it's controlled as well. And that can be sometimes difficult, okay? Now, questionnaires, we've included these in our books, okay? These are where students go around asking their classmates questions, okay? And the point is, they get to learn about each other. Remember the multiple intelligence theory? This is for the socializer, that student that likes to learn about other people. So it's a speaking activity, but it's a fun way to do speaking activity. All right? Now, we're gonna... We're here. What do you hear? I'm gonna play some sounds here. This is the first one. You're gonna tell me a story in a moment. Listen to the sound. The first one was rain. Turned into a horror story, thriller movie. Okay, talk to the person next to you. Try to come up with a story and try to include all of these sounds. <laughs> try to come up with a story. Very creative way. Yeah. And the kid was being kidnapped. Yeah. So they. He was walking with in the, the the ceiling. You could hear the the cracks in the floor, and then the the criminal, the guy, fell off the balcony. <laughs> yeah, and he died in the end. No, he passed away. <laughs> yeah, it, it turned into a very thriller movie. Kids love these movies. People dying and screaming and thunderstorms. No, he's screaming, screaming, and then he's screaming like falling, like ah, something like that. question why why does an english teacher wear sunglasses when he comes to the classroom one more minute because the students are so bright <laughs> i do these language riddles they, they, they love them and then they get a compliment as well because they're bright and they're... Uh, they have a very good idea yes or I do these knock-knock jokes. I do these knock-knock jokes. For example, knock-knock, who's there? Lettuce. Lettuce like knock-knock. And the lettuce who? Let us continue with the lesson or let us do that. Let us learn grammar. We start the lesson with a knock-knock joke. It's a very good idea. Okay, okay, time to stop. Have your attention. Did anybody come up with a story? A fun story to share? Come on. I heard you talking. Yes, go ahead. Okay, quiet everybody. Okay, that's a good strategy. Okay. He was scared. He was scared. He started running. Mm -hmm. Next person, what happened? Yes. It started raining. Thunder. 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 Thunder.
Okay. Okay. That's all. What about okay. somebody else? Take it from there. Last one. Yes. I think in the end he woke up and it was all just a dream. Oh. <laughs> I ruined the story. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. And that's actually what happened. It was. A Is it really? Dream. Is it really though? It was. Was it a dream? No. <laughs> General yes. yes. uh, Actually, a dream. Was it a dream? There you yes. go. Okay. <laughs> All right. It was actually a dream. I see. <laughs> but anyway. So as I was saying, very classroom management. Okay. We talked about this, having students working in pairs, working in groups. Dating for the different learning styles. Oh, by the way, here's another idea. You know in your classrooms you have different abilities? Look at this listening activity. This one, students listen and choose A, B, or C. Okay? Multiple choice. But sometimes in your classrooms, you might have some students that are more advanced. Okay? And I've, I've talked to some teachers, and some teachers will say, what I do is I give students the more difficult ones, the ones that are more advanced, I'll take out the options, <laughs> right? And then I have them listen, and they have to listen for the answer, right? Good idea. This is, if you want to, like I said, cater for the students. I'm going to talk to the rock to modern people. Just to motivate them, how do you do it? Just to do it. 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 Do you think this is something that can be done? Yeah, it's, you can think about it. Or again, listen, here's another listening activity. And with these listening activities, if you're gonna do it with your students, make sure you always tell your students to read the statements, try to anticipate, guess what the answer might be. Because I've seen classrooms where teachers will walk in and say, okay, kids, it's time for a listening activity. Listen to the text and answer the question. You're not teaching by doing something like that. You know that, right? You don't do that. So, first of all, you read through it, okay, and you discuss what it might be. Play the recording once, and I always do this with my students. I will play it one time. I tell them, don't answer any questions, just listen. I don't want you to do anything but listen. The second time I play it, and you know, they go now try to do the answers, and maybe I'll play it a third time, okay? Something depends on how much time I have in the classroom and so on. But we discuss it as well. So remember, you are a teacher, you are a guide, you're helping your students. Don't take them and throw them in the deep end of the pool if they haven't learned how to swim, okay? So, again, step by step. All right. <clears throat> now, other activities like here, you know, with grammar, vocabulary, you always like to give options, okay? Like, depending on, of course, what the answer is going to be. Or, no options, all right? And sometimes you give like either two options or all of the options and they have to say that makes it more difficult. Again, you're catering to the different needs of your students. You're making it easier by having just A or B or mixed. Okay? Or no options at all. Okay? Yeah. You think of a word that fits in. These are again different ways you can help students to cater for different learning yeah. styles, okay? So you give them two options and one answer, all the options on top, or no options at all, all right? And that's more challenging for students, for those high achievers in your classroom, okay? Take into consideration your students' pace, all right? As I said, some students are quick, you know, like the tortoise, and <laughs> the air, okay? But and others need more time. So again, we need to make sure that all of our students have that time that is needed, okay? And that's why it's always good for, you know, to have something in your mind, okay, for the quicker ones, the students that are going to finish quickly, I have to have an idea, again, because they're going to be disruptive after. They're going to start talking and not letting the other students, right? Now, not all students that come into the English classroom have the same background knowledge. We mentioned that, okay? I think nowadays they all have TikTok, so it doesn't really change. So. It doesn't really yeah. change. Right. Here is like 
we have these questionnaires that test different background knowledge. Okay, the reason we do this is, as I said earlier, you might have some students that know so much about the world, they know so much about a topic, but they might not be very good at English, but this is an opportunity for them to shine because they have this background knowledge. All right? So what do you think the answers to these questions are, guys? The marathon is the first race or the last race of the Olympics? The first. Okay. Maybe it's the last. What do you think, according to research, how much time should people spend on physical activity? <laughs> Two hours a day, half an hour most days of the week? <laughs> I like the first half. Half an hour? I like that time too much. <laughs> so human body is 75% water or 50 75. 75. Which color suggests danger? Red. Red. What does J.K. Rowling do? Writing. What does this mean? It's organic or is direct? Okay. Again. <laughs> yes. 50 to 65% water. Really? Okay. Again. These are going to be different reading objectives that are going to be found in the book. And they're taken from these kind of passages. Healthy lifestyles. Source of water. This is the one with the water. All of those questions are from passages that are in our books. Okay? J.K. Rowling one. Okay? Alright, I'm not going to play it. But anyway. And the symbols. Okay? As you can see, we are teaching our students English, but... We are also teaching them about the world around them. We're teaching them yes. content. Things that they are learning in their native language, they're also learning content in English as well. And they make connections between what they've yeah, yeah. learned in their native language and now what they're learning in English. And that helps, okay? It helps when you have you know, information from different kinds of sources, okay? There's an activity, a problem-solving activity. You're stranded on a desert island. In pairs, discuss a sense. Which five things do you choose to have with you? Okay, I'll give you one minute. You have some time. Give you one minute. Talk to the person next to you. We've and of course, this. why? Three things. Uh, okay. Well, if I both pass my my leg, I got both. Fine. <laughs> um, I'd like five things. Does that human human count? I'd like to have a person. <laughs> because two, two people, if it's, if it's not a thing that, uh, yeah, a knife, a big sharp knife, because you can, you know, provide food and cut trees and do the shelter, yeah, lighter just to light, to light up fire, start a fire, um, you know, actually, five, what else would I a uh, notebook, notebook, just so I won't lose my mind. I'll start taking notes and read, so I won't forget how to read. I'll talk to myself instead. I wouldn't care. Yeah, but it's better to not run on. So yeah. Okay, okay, settle down. Settle down. Who's going to share their answers with us? Raise your hand. I don't want to have to pick on you like a student. Raise your hand. Who would like to share their ideas? Yes, go ahead. I'll only just have one thing. I'm going to mention five items, right? Yes. Okay. A tent. A tent. Uh, Shelter. A knife or an axe. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that going to run out though? That's going to run out. 
jokes that our students do. We're not very much different. The point I'm making here is that we have included problem solving activities. Those are all problems, okay? These are all different problems. Your sister always borrows money and never gives it back, okay? All these are problems. The point is to have a discussion Okay, with topics that are that students can relate to. Okay, they're not just topics that they don't care about. This series was designed for students to be engaged in the sort of study what teachers and other students are in. And that's why we've tried to use topics that help them. Some other ideas you can encourage your students, diaries. Encourage your students to write three, four sentences. In English, every day. What did you do today? What's something exciting that you learned? Or what's something strange that you learned? Anything. Tell them to write three sentences. Okay? Surveys. Ask them to have surveys with other students in the classroom. You can create. What's your favorite food? How many times uh, do you go to the gym? Exactly. So I always try to encourage my students to read, read, and read, okay? So this is American to the Top, all right? Have you been using this series? Have anyone used it? Three years ago, yes, we have revised it. The point I want to make here, it also comes in a split edition, okay? This is the full edition. It also comes in a split edition, so two books for each one, half the modules. That's for our college and schools that want to use one book for one semester and the other book for the other semester, it depends. Okay? It follows the CEF, the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. You know, that means that there's a smooth transition from one level to the next, okay? And it tells students when you complete, let's say, this book, you are going to be at A2 level of the Common European Framework of Reference. That means you will be able to do this, this, and this in English, okay? But other than that, this is the setup, the modules. There's always four lessons, and in these four lessons, we always introduce the new vocabulary, the new grammar, okay? The next lesson is called the Top Skills lesson. Here now, we focus on reading, writing, listening, speaking, using the language that they've learned here, okay? And of course, the revision and consolidation of the entire module, okay? We always have a cover page. Now, a lot of times, teachers always skip the cover page. Don't do that, it's a mistake. Spend a few minutes on the cover page. Why? Because a cover page is an introduction to the module but look at this, I always like this, okay? It says, what's in the module, okay, what they're gonna learn, and I tell students, okay, it says here, you're gonna read about a teenager with a part-time job. 
go through the module, find that. This is just to acquaint them with what's in this module. Okay? And then, just to go back, it's always a two page spread. Okay? We have the vocabulary, the grammar. All right? Uh, we can do there a lot of dialogues, too. You notice we don't just have reading text, we also have dialogues because we want to show students what English sounds like when people speak to each other. And then you can ask students to act out the dialogue, to read it in pairs, okay? And then one student will be one character and the other one. And again, the grammar that's practiced is the grammar that's here, by the way. This grammar that is focused here, they're gonna also break it down and do more. And then the speaking will include different lands, grammar and vocabulary from this lesson. So you see, we try to intertwine all the skills. Right? We don't just teach grammar, just vocabulary. We teach vocabulary, grammar, in reading, in speaking. Yes, exactly. The next lesson, okay? Pronunciation activity, various types of texts like quizzes. Again, we try to have variety. Variety is the spice of life, okay? Makes the lessons more engaging. Nice quote. At the back of the book, there's a grammar reference. Everything we teach students, all the grammar that we teach in the lessons, they go to the back, they have all that extra information there. Okay? Again, some students like grammar. I had students that love grammar, which were American. Other students hate it. That's why we put it in the back, it's up to the students to decide. Quizzes, and the top scales with also tip, tip boxes, etc. All right. What are you thinking? Difficult? Easy? It's good? How, well structured. how old is this book? Yes. I mean, that's what we've done. When are, when are, when are these books published? Make sure that you can cope with this book. And do you encourage your students to do this learner economy section? Yeah, yeah. they usually yes. just, yeah. just skip it. But you skip it? No, they... they want to skip it. They want, don't tell them to skip it. Tell them, hey, this is what you have learned to do. You should be proud of yourself. All right. Culture pages, learning about the culture, and songs, okay? Mm. So we talk about this. Okay, and the workbook, by the way, I just want to mention, the workbook is in full color, okay? Students always think workbooks are black and white for homework, okay? But we try to make it attractive at least to them. And if you're gonna assign homework, by the way, as I said earlier, make sure you do one or two examples and then tell your students to finish the rest at home. Because they always come back with the excuse, oh, I didn't understand the activity. I didn't do it because I didn't know how to do it. So I always used to do one or two and then assign the rest. All right, and then, as you can see, lots of other activities and the teacher's interlinked book, etc. Well, the key and the transcript is there. Sometimes teachers like to have the transcript because the recordings are not working. Yeah. So you can read it to them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The tests, you have access to the tests, and they're in modifiable format. That's important because what you can do as a teacher, you can change the order of the questions, and give it out to your students, and that's why, hey, we don't have the same test. It's yeah. the same test, but the questions are in different order. Yeah. All right, it's harder for them to cheat. <laughs> All right. Yeah, these are, these are the tests. All right. And different projects to take learning outside the classroom. And we also have grammar books focusing on just grammar. If you are a grammarian, this is what you have for you. And the interactive whiteboard. So why are American to the top? Because it's exciting, well organized, <laughs> easy to use, effective, and thank you. <laughs>
talk for now. <laughs>